Good morning, Odelsey Middle School students. This is Mr. Woolley. And remember, the information contained in this video is intended to be viewed only by the students in Mr. Woolley's classroom. By watching the video, you agree that you will not record or share the video with anyone who's not a student in Mr. Woolley's classroom. Okay, today we're working on Lesson 9. We're going to go through a couple examples, then it'll be time for some group work for those people that are in class, or if you're on your own, you'll have to work on it on your own. But we're still continuing from Lesson 8, trying to build equations and then solve our equations. So in our first one, this is on page 55 from Lesson 9, it says Heather practices soccer and piano. Each day she practices piano for two hours. After five days, she practiced both piano and soccer for a total of 20 hours. Assuming that she practiced soccer the same amount of time each day, how many hours per day each did Heather practice soccer? So the five comes from five days, and we're going to be able to repeat a scenario, so we're going to use the distributive property. So five times, something's going to repeat itself. We're going to use H for hours of soccer, and this is the amount of piano hours. They said um, that she does that for two hours each day. And all that adds up to a total of 20. So by the time I actually distribute that out, I get 5 times H plus 10, so that's 10 hours of the piano throughout the whole week. So we get rid of the piano hours, take that away, so we're going to 5 times H equals 10, and divide each side by 5, H equals 2. So she gets 2 hours of soccer per day. And you can always double check, 2 hours of soccer, 2 hours of piano, that's a total of 4, times 5 does give you 20. Now similar scenario here, down beneath that, but a little bit different scenario. It says, over five days, Jake practices piano for a total of two hours. Jake practices soccer for the same amount of time each day. If he practiced piano and soccer for a total of 20 hours, how many hours each per day did Jake practice soccer? Well, now we got five times the amount of hours for soccer, but he doesn't do the two hours of piano per day. It's just two hours of the whole week. So that's why it's not a distributed property scenario because... We know he's going to do five days worth of soccer practice, but this is only my total for the piano. So, as I go ahead and solve that, I get rid of the two from each side, and then, so five times the hours he does soccer, it happens to be 18 hours. So divide by five, divide by five, you get 3.6. So 3.6 hours of soccer per day. Notice how everything repeated itself. Soccer and piano repeated itself every day, and this was just the total for the week, but this amount repeated every day. So that's why there's the difference in the problems. All right, what we're going to do is we are going to jump ahead to page 58. Now, there's only a few problems we're going to be working on page 58. It's numbers 2, 4, 5, 6, and number 9. All right? So what we're going to do here is obviously you guys can read these on your own. All right, number 2, 4, 5, 6, and number 9. And I'm not going to explain each one here because that's really what kids are doing in class together. But what I'm going to do is show you an image of how to set up the problem and solve it. So if you have any questions afterwards, you can send me an email. But at this point, I think you guys are going to be pretty good at solving them. So practice trying to set them up, trying to solve them on your own, and then you can check the next images to see how you did. So here's our setup for number two. And by the time you calculate all your answers... That's what we should have, and they're specifically asking for Michael's present age there. So, but you kind of figure out both ages. Number four, you had to figure out kind of the price of what one shirt was going to end up being there. So there's our setup there, and we can go ahead and use that for our cost per shirt. Number five, we had to figure out how many months it was going to take for the kid to reach a certain height. So. M stood for that number of months, and you can see if, as we follow the setup, end up being 12 months from now. Number six. This one's a little bit tougher due to the fractional amount of work here, but N stands for the number, but then we had like this amount of it, and then this amount of it, and then this all adds up to this total. So you did have to do some common denominator work. A half had to get turned into three sixths. So you had one of them plus one sixth plus two and three sixths ends up being three and four sixths total. Plus seven, and then you get rid of your seven out of there. And you get three and four six, or you actually can go to the lowest terms with it down to three and two thirds n, and then divide by three and two thirds, divide by three and two thirds, and then make it into an improper. Then you can keep change flip after that, and then you end up getting the one and a half by that, and that's the mystery number. So a lot of work involved with that one. All right, and then number nine, probably the biggest thing as you're setting this up is C is going to stand for the cost of the pencil. And then the pens are more. They're the cost of pencil and 11 cents more. 
So then we need 250 of those, we need 250 of the pens, and to get that. So you have to do a little bit of multiplication here, some distributive work here in that scenario to figure out all the pen cost. And then you can add those together to get the 500C, and you still have the 2750, and get rid of that. And you get 500C equals 15, divide it, and you get 3 cents. So each pencil costs 3 cents, but don't forget, the pens were 11 cents more. So you had to take 3 cents plus 11 to get the 14 cents. But anyway, just kind of a quick skim over those. That's what people are going to be working on in groups and discussing it in class today. But hopefully you can kind of understand how those set up on your own. So thanks for watching.